Today, we're going to look at Riemann sums, or Riemann integration. This gives us a deeper understanding of where integrations we know it comes from. So let's say we have a line, or a function f of x, and we have an arbitrary range a to b. Now, if we want to find the area under the curve between this a and b interval, how do we do that? Well, we know we could use generic integration techniques. So we could integrate our function f of x on the range a to b. But why is this the case? This is where Riemann integration gets involved. So if we look at the approximate definition that the integral of f of x on the range a to b is the sum from j equals 0 to n minus 1 of f of cj times delta x, where delta x is just the distance between a and b over n, and cj is just the lower value of our range plus j times delta x. It's important to note that this approximation here is actually a left-hand Riemann sum, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Right, so what does this all mean? Let's firstly look at the case where n equals 10. This means that we'll have 10 equally spaced bars between a and b. Therefore, as we're summing the area of these individual bars, we actually get an approximation to what the area under the curve will be. Now, as you'll see, these bars have evaluated it on their left-hand side, hence why this is a left-hand Riemann sum. So, let's see what happens when we change the range of the sum to j equals 1 to 10. We now see that each of these segments are evaluated on their most right-hand side point, hence giving a different approximation to the area under the curve. You may be thinking this still is quite a rough approximation. Well, let's increase that to 20 bars. We see this gives a much better approximation to the area under the curve, but it's nowhere near perfect. Now imagine we were to have an infinite amount of bars between our range A and B. We would see that we actually get the exact area under the curve, so this would no longer be an approximation. And this here is exactly the formula for a Riemann sum, where we're taking an integral of a function f of x on the range A to B. Right, so let's look at an example. Say we wanted to integrate 4x plus 2 on the range 2 to 7. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out what our delta x and cj are. Well, the delta x will be 7 minus 2 over n, or 5 over n, and our cj will be 2 plus j times delta x. Well, that just becomes 2 plus j times 5 over n. Now, using these, we can now substitute back into our infinite sum, and we can start to evaluate our right-handed Riemann sum. So we know our function f of x is 4x plus 2. So if we just apply that to our f of cj, we see that we get 4 times 2 plus 5j over n plus 2, which we can then expand and simplify. We're now going to split this bracket into two sums to make it easier to handle. We know that the sum of an integer from 1 to n is just that integer times the n itself, hence why we get this 10n here. Then for this other sum, we'll pull out the 20 over n as a constant. Then we can use the summation formula that the sum from j equals 1 to n of j is n times n plus 1 all over 2. Now it's starting to look a lot more manageable. So if we start to expand and simplify inside these brackets, we see that we'll end up with 10n plus 10n plus 10. Overall giving us the limit as n goes to infinity of 20n plus 10 times 5 over n, which we just need to expand before we can take the limit itself. Here, we see that we're left with the limit as n goes to infinity of 100 plus 50 over n. And as we know, if we evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of 50 over n, this just goes to 0. So we're left with the end result that our integral equals 100. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today, looking at the basics of Riemann integration. And if you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video as everything helps. Cheers.